Hello, my name is Lauren Alvarez, journalist and producer with credits in The Hollywood Reporter, Billboard, and Forbes. Welcome to this year's 2020 10th edition of FIC in LA, now the Guadalajara Film Festival in Los Angeles. Thank you to our supporting organizations. The festival's new mission is to show the best of Latin American cinema and open doors for emerging Latinx creators with the intention to cultivate a borderless film festival industry. I'm here to chat with the filmmakers and cast of Summertime, our closing night gala. Here with us is the director of Summertime, Carlos Lopez Estrada, Mila Cura, Tyrese, Tyrus Winter, Paulina Cuna Gonzalez, and Gordon Ape. All right, so let's get right into it. Summertime is a beautiful love letter to Los Angeles, I have to say. It was very touching to me as an Angelino. Um, the music, the food, the artistry with slam poetry. What about depicting the city of Los Angeles through slam poetry made it so special for each and every one of you? Uh, should I start? Do you, do you all want to start? Uh, I'll start. Uh, for me, what was most special about this group of people was the fact that they all, they all shared this um, love for their city, but it's in such unique ways. And I think that you've, I've gotten to see many movies that you know, are usually like love letters to a city. And I feel like usually the perspective that you get to see it is like somewhat limited or somewhat specific. And what I love the most about this group of people is that they got to explore a city through so many different points of view, so many different uh, backgrounds and cultures and and just like ways of, of existing in that city. So that, that to me was the, the thing that drew me to this project, just the fact that I thought it was such an unusual way to have a conversation about a person and their relationship to the city. Uh, so yeah, I don't know that. Gordon, pass it on to you. <laughs> Thanks, Carlos. Um, yeah, so uh, the four of us are interconnected in a way where um, we, we all met through a nonprofit organization called Get Lit, which um, already is a huge platform for spoken word poetry. And so I think something about uh, the surrealism of, you know, when those moments in your life happen where you, like there are moments where you're kind of going to remember them if they, because they had a large impact on you or, or, or whatever the case might be, um, expressing that through the vehicle of a spoken word poem already like being such um, distilled uh, meaning and experience. Um, is is incredibly powerful and seeing that and then seeing that transfer onto a screen is a whole you know it's it, it's the merging of so many different types of mediums um, and I think it really means a lot to me um, personally uh, uh, you know being able to express my my you know like what is truly deepest um, in my like soul or like existence whatever it is that that eats at me or gives me joy or whatever it is um, and also uh, this is a long-winded answer, but uh, after doing this film, um, because of Carlos's genius, um, I began to see all these different types of media and like have poetry interspliced into them. The bit, the largest thing I can think of is Lovecraft Country. Um, if y'all watch that TV series, every episode has like an intersplicing of of like a, of poetry and. And I couldn't help but to think of our, of our film when I was watching that TV series because um, seeing poetry used in, in TV and film is not something uh, I've seen used a lot, especially in the ways that we do it in this movie. And I'm, I'm really happy to see it um, being brought in and given to more people. Definitely. I feel like you have, you said a lot of things that I, I want to touch on and we're going to get to because I do want to talk about Get Lit in the organization. But you did say interconnectedness, which is actually great because that was my next question. You know, the film depicts all of these spoken word poetry segments and they're all interconnected through each and every one of you. Um, sometimes I think people think LA is just green juices and yoga and hey, you know, this almost like as this is superficial land, right? Okay. And it's really a lot of people who came here with a dream and are trying to make mm -hmm. that a reality or whatever possibility that it is. 
So um, I do like a few of the cliches, like the Ubers and the scooters, because we all love a scooter ride. Um, but there are many multidimensional characters who are more than the status quo. So tell us a little bit about the character development process for the film and how you guys, you know, were able to interconnect all of them and, and in that form. If it's cool, I, I feel like, uh, Mila, you probably would have a lot of insight on this. Uh, Mila was our, she's in the movie. She wrote uh, two poems for it, but she also uh, um, functioned as our poetry supervisor. So she worked with every single one of the, po the poets, uh, just crafting their scenes and with us crafting the script. So if, if can I pass it on to you, Mila? <laughs> yes. Hi. Um... Yeah, as far as interconnectedness, I think that that is something that does make this movie so special. Um, because as far as like the process of putting the film together, everybody sort of had an individual perspective that they wanted to bring forth or like a particular part of the city that they wanted to reflect or something of that sort. And really what the process looked like was every poet individually writing their own scene and then us all workshopping it together and sort of weaving it into a larger narrative. But I think that the interconnectedness is so potent because there wasn't necessarily like one, like overall, it was so many, so many individual narratives that we worked to create a script out of. And even then that script was like always sort of adapting as we were filming because it was such a complex like amalgamation, I don't even know if that's a word, um, <laughs> complex like pot, a uh, stew of stories that we were creating together. Um, yeah. No, that makes sense. I, I definitely feel like as much as there are different, uh, you know, facets to the characters, I love that you guys also broke down different neighborhoods because I mean, people just think it's one big LA, but no, there's Venice, there's Hollywood Hills, there's Echo Park, there's downtown LA. Like, it's all it's almost like they're their own personality and character within itself so i love that you guys tackled all of that i know many of the stories are true but were all of them true like was each like or were they inspired by something that happened you know what i mean that was somewhat fiction i'm curious to know i think it was a little bit of all of the above okay. um, it's many i mean many of the poets of the poems existed already and and we use them as is we just sort of like asked like can we can we just create a scene around your poem some of the poems existed and then we sort of like adapted a little bit to fit into some scenes or we we wrote scenes sort of like uh expanding on the the universe of the poem and then some poems were created entirely uh uniquely for the for the movie so there's there's a handful of poems that didn't exist we had two months to workshop this movie into existence so it didn't exist at the beginning of, of the two months and then we somehow had something by the time we had to shoot. Some poems were created even after we shot it because uh, we needed some more interconnectedness. Interconnect uh, so Tyrus' second poem, for example, was uh, created way, way uh, deeper into the, the production process. And Paulina, did you, I saw you raising your hand. Did you want to say something? Uh, yeah, I was just, I want I wanted to say, um, I created my poem Red Lipstick um, before I was approached to do the movie, and um, it is obviously like a theme about like me and my mom and our relationship together, and a lot of the quotes in the poem are exact things that she has said to me about like Red Lipstick. I mean, obviously, like, the character of the mom is, like, a little bit more of an exaggerated version, but I think, like, the energy of that whole relationship and that dynamic and the history of, like, women in, like, um, traditional families, I think that all rings very true to my experience. Definitely, and it's interesting because as Latina, Latina is, like, red lipstick is such an, uh, you know, an identifying thing, like, we wanted to show, it's like our womanhood, we're growing into it, and we want to, you know, grow up. So that was very relatable. And I feel like one of the most powerful po um, poems and I appreciate it. And it was very beautiful and we can see that. Thank you so much. Thank you, that means a lot. Of course, I mean, each and every poem in its, you know, in its own right is, was just so vulnerable. So I feel like when you guys were asked to do the film, 
was it somewhat scary and daunting? Like, oh, um, these are poems that I've had and I don't, like everyone's going to see them now. Tyrus, you go, you go. <laughs> I literally was just like staring off into a daze. I'm like, yes, yeah. speak. <laughs> but I definitely was really terrified when I was first approached from it because I always think of things like, to like backtrack so I come from like the desert like I grew up in Palmdale Lancaster like the Antelope Valley so I never really saw much of opportunity so when I was approached by Carlos I was like really scared and also just like wait is this really happening wait at the last minute it's probably like never gonna happen for me and then when I noticed it started kicking off and I was like oh wait we've wrapped <laughs> like that happened and it was really daunting and really scary for me to be more vulnerable not only with my poetry with creating my second poem home but to translate that on a film and on the screen was even more scary but i think that it really helped to broaden my writing and it helped to broaden my perspective of what i can do with my writing and with my art in general and i was so happy and so grateful for not only the opportunity but the journey that i went on and the memories, man. The memories. <laughs> Tyrus' story, I mean, every single uh, poet came into the movie in a like, pretty interesting way, but Tyrus' story was particularly, uh, I, I think, just inspiring because he is a little bit younger than most of the, the people in the, in the film. And we had already sort of like cast our group of people that we were going to follow. And then Get Lit had their annual, um, what's the name of the, the, the gallery? Classic Slam. Uh, the Classic oh, Slam, sorry. Okay. They did <laughs> Classic Slam. Uh, this was like right before we started to uh, go into like the development of the story. And Diane, who runs Get Lit, invited me to be a judge in it. Uh, so last minute I joined and a few of the people from the production came uh, to see it with us. And Tyrus was one of the performers in the classic slam. And he performed his ode to Yelp poem. And he brought, this was at the Ace Hotel Theater, you know, thousands of people. Everyone was just so, so fired up about Tyrus's uh, poem that we, we reached out to Diane and we were like, Diane, please, uh, can we, is, is it possible to bring uh, this wonderful being into the movie because he just has something about, and then he came and just clicked and brought some really, really uh, be beautiful insight into the movie. So anyway, that's Tyrus' story into Summer Camp. Which it, that was amazing, by the way. It's so relatable on so many levels because, you know, sometimes you just don't want the expensive toast. That's it. <laughs> Um, so just to recap, you know, you guys keep bringing up Get Lit, and I, just for the viewer's sake, it's a nonprofit organization whose mission is to use poetry to increase literacy, empower youth, and inspire communities. So Carlos, how did you find out about the organization and what made you go that night and see it? Uh, I had, we had known about the organization for years uh, and had been going to a few of their events and I know that uh, Kimberly, our producer at Summertime, had had worked with some of the poets in some previous um, projects and we developed a, a relation, I developed a relationship with Diane who's the director of the organization and she invited Kimberly, uh, the producer, Neil, one of the executive producers, and myself to it was like a, a showcase at their office. This was before the, the classic slam. It was a, a slightly informal showcase where like 30 of the Get Lit Poets would just one after another, just perform a piece, say a few words about themselves and then pass it on to the next um, poet. This was probably like a year, like two years ago, I think. Um, no, that's not true. That was less than that. That was like a year and a half ago. Anyway, um, <laughs> it, it was this really, really moving experience. And it, like, like I think the movie is, it was just, you know, an hour and a half of like lots, lots of, of 
really stimulating thoughts and lot, lots of questions that I've been having about myself and the city and my place in it answered so, so quickly, so creatively by these really young minds. And I remember just walking out of this showcase and just feeling like there, there had to be a way that I could contribute a little bit more than, you know, just watching them. And I was like, look, I don't know exactly what this is, but I would love to, I would love to, uh, I would love to be an amplifying device to these voices. And I would love other people to have the experience that I just had. Uh, it, it, I hadn't been sort of like moved as much as I had been when I, when I saw this group of people. So I came back to Diane and I said, look, I don't really know what this could be, but I would, I would love to figure something out. I don't know if it's like a play or a touring uh, showcase thing. Like, I just wanna, I, I wanna be a part of, of sharing this with others. And <laughs> sorry, just lots of thoughts in my mind right now. Uh, I'm trying to relive it. And then long story short, I thought about uh, what this would look like in, in, in film form and how we could potentially turn this into a movie. And then I thought about movies like Slacker that have a similar sort of like structure. And that's when I came back to Diana. I was like, look, I have this idea. Why don't we try to put this together as a film? We'll do it extra low budget, just uh, get our friends to shoot it. And then essentially each poet would uh, device and write and perform their own piece. And that's essentially how Summertime started. Like, I think three months later we were shooting it uh, because all of the poets were going to college and all of the poets sort of like had plans. So we had a window of maybe four months to uh, develop it and shoot it. Well, and I, rem I remember seeing in one of your interviews that if you did not get the budget, you were willing to shoot it on an iPhone, correct? The whole, the whole point of the experiment was that we would, it would be sort of like the, the, the process of shooting it would be dictated by the content and what we came up with. And we were like, look, we have a window of four months to shoot it um, because it's, it's just practically impossible to do it after the summer. So we're going to do it this summer. We're going to see if we can get some funding. We're going to see if we can get some people to support it. But if we can't, uh, then we're still going to do it. And if it means shooting on like a small DSLR, if it means shooting on phones, uh, maybe that will add to the charm of the movie. And, and we ended up getting just enough money to do it sort of like well. Um, but still, that was the guiding that was the philosophy of how we shot it. It was like, look, we're gonna, we're gonna do it this summer. It's not gonna be perfect, but uh, we're gonna try to find sort of like the, the perfection, the, in the imperfections, it will get to be exactly what it has to be. And if it means we're gonna get uh, non-actors, if it means we're gonna get uh, shooting relocations, if it means that we're gonna be up writing it till 2 a.m. before the shoot day, because, we have no other option then so be it that's that's what's going to give it its its uniqueness and that's what's going to give it its its uh, personality and that's really what happened i mean it's it the making of the movie was absolutely insane and we definitely didn't have enough time or resources or like preparation for it but i think that's what really brought the best out of all of us we we're all on our toes we we're all improvising and I think hopefully that's what gives the movie sort of like this this freshness that I think it wouldn't have gotten had we had a normal uh, like development time or a normal shoot time or a normal script process. Definitely. I've been talking, I've been talking a lot, I'm gonna stop talking. No, it's okay. I mean, I, I totally love what you're saying because I think sometimes as creatives, we think that art needs to be perfect and art is not necessarily, that's the reason why it resonates because it's not perfect. And I actually loved the way it was shot and I thought it was cinematic. And though it was, you know, it's not perfect. That's what's beautiful about it. I almost, I don't like perfection. So I am here for it. I love it. And, you know, you did touch upon the locations and that's what I really wanted to ask you about. The film relies so many of like different shots of the city, like murals, dispensaries, 
dispensaries. Um, the Metro, um, I personally love like that you showed the garment district because it's like LA and it's been here forever. And that's one of the most defining places for me in LA as, and even the flower market. And it's not really shown in film, which is interesting, right? So um, I'm curious, did you, how did you go about curating which locations you wanted to capture, especially under that time crunch? Uh, we didn't really have a plan. Okay. Uh, and no, it, it really, the movie, I think what's cool about this movie and what's hard to really talk about is that the, it was so alive up until the day we locked it. Like we were shooting some poems, the last home poem that we shot with Tyrus, we shot it maybe like two months after the movie, after we had wrapped, we were in production, in post-production and we, we uh, hadn't fully figured out how the movie was gonna end or what was like the, the second half of it. And we shot that poem with Tyrus three times in different locations, one during daytime, uh, one during sunset. And then the last one that we kept was at nighttime in, uh, in, in downtown. So there wasn't really a, a formula. It was essentially, we had the first poems. We were like, look, where would you like this poem to take place? Uh, and each person would say like, oh, my neighborhood, oh, uh, in, at home, oh, or where I work, or I wrote this poem about this specific thing. Mila is like, oh, I wrote some of these and I would like, love for it to take place in public transportation. Um, and then from there, we created a map of the city. So we said, all right, let's see, let's sort of like just throw all these poems there and see how they work geographically and then see how they work narratively and then we came up with a structure of okay let's start at the beach and then let's make our way into the inner city and end it in east LA and then sort of like try to fit all of these things in these puzzles I yeah I don't know uh Mila Tyrus Gordon Paulina do you I know that yours were very specific and that you wanted to do it in in uh public transportation like on the metro Mila but I don't know if you want to throw anything in there in terms of like how the, uh, some of the other ones came came to be. I can just speak quickly as far as like um, a lot of the process did involve people being like I want to reflect my corner of the city and I think that something that rang really true for me was the idea of like public transit has always been a thing that connected me from the multiple places that I've lived in LA because I don't really feel like I have like one central home here but I feel like my home is the bus and I think that something else to to note about the film in general that has already been touched on and I think also is reflected really beautifully in Paulina's scene is the idea of like surrealism and being able to do things in this film that we might not be able to do or experience in life and I think that like for me it was really important to like want to speak up on a bus where I felt so quieted but also so like safe like there's a lot of conflicting emotions for me on public transit like as a young woman traveling through Los Angeles and um, I don't know if Paulina, you want to speak to either the place or the surrealism, but I, I think that that's uh, an important theme. Well, in regards to the surrealism, I'm so glad you brought that up because I feel like poetry and film, like really, like they go together so well because poetry in itself is already like, we're collecting all these images and metaphors and like we're invoking this like feeling. And so I feel like when you put poetry to film, you have like this, you are, you, when you put it to film, which is already inherently a visual language, like you, it really like, you gotta really go for the surrealism, which is why like, when I was like imagining my poem, I thought of like the red dancers and I thought of like them all coming together in like this powerful dance. And I'm in the, in the collaboration without the choreographer, the way that Carlos um, directed it, it all just kind of came together so beautifully. So I feel like this was really like a very good collaboration and really the surrealism really like lended itself very well to our subject matter. Oh, never, definitely. Oh, sorry. No, go ahead. I, no, I was gonna say, I'm never gonna forget uh, Paulina's face when she first saw the dance. Uh, <laughs> we had showed, we had shown her like little little uh, chunks of it and we had shown her some clips, but the first time when we were on set and all the, the dance, I think we had like 39 dancers, something like that. When they all came on and they did the first thing and they're obviously like just wonderful and perfect. So they just did it once and everyone on set was sort of like, 
I everyone was mind blown. But Paulina, <laughs> Paulina was inside looking at, at the monitor. And I just remember her expression. It was kind of like what she's doing right now. Say, so, her expression so is funny. amazing right now. <laughs> I, it was like this, but times a hundred. Um, and and yeah, I mean, I think that that's a very good example of how a, a poem sort of like evolved and grew. Sometimes it was like Paulina had this idea of the dance. Um, and then we sort of took it where like, hey, how about if we do it like this and on the street, and then we play, uh, run it by her. She was like, yes, no, change this. And, and like that, every single uh, poem and every single scene really had a life of its own. Like how it, it, there wasn't one particular formula. Like every poet was yeah. different. Every poem was different. Every scene, location, extras, the music. Uh, and I think that's, that's what was so uh, exciting for me. Definitely. I, and I felt that. And I mean, I'm curious, Paulina, did your mom see the scene and what was her reaction? I need to know. <laughs> she was, <laughs> I mean, my mom and I, we actually like get along very well. Like she like understands like where I'm coming from. And she, I honestly, I, when I recorded the choreography on my phone and um, I actually, when I was filming that scene, literally like the next day I had to like take a red eye to New York because I was about to move into my college dorm. And so my, and so I showed my mom like uh, the dance part and she fully cried because she found it so beautiful and moving. And so like that really meant a lot to me. And Aww. so like, yeah. It's definitely so, a parallel into your real life and the experience. That's, that's awesome. Yeah. And so many. I love it. Well, I have to let everyone know that you guys were featured in the Sundance lineup, which is amazing. And you, you know, that's, that's a cool flex. You guys should be very proud of it. Um, how did any one of you, Tyrus or Gordon, I know you, we haven't heard from you, but what did your family and friends say? And what was the reception to the film once they did see it? Um, Tyrus, would you like to speak first? <laughs> okay um, okay I'll go first um well <laughs> it's funny um I feel like my parents aren't always this like okay my parents are traditional East Asian parents um, I was born in Hong Kong and I um, I moved here very young so I say that just to say that in most ways my parents are not super traditional in that they um they won't be super like what am I trying to say? I'm like, in my head, a traditional East Asian parent um, does not approve of your success um, like that hard. Like they won't be like, oh my God, like great job. You're such an amazing kid. They're just going to be like, all right, good job. Like what's next? Like <laughs> it's like very low key and um, it's just, a it's a different culture. And so yeah. I would say most of the time they're not like that, but this time they were like, okay. And like, <laughs> and I'm like, guys, I was in a movie and they're like, yeah, but I still don't know if this is the right thing. I think you should like get like a real job. And I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> I was on a movie screen. Like, do you know what Sundance is? And they were like, yeah, but I don't really care. And it's like, oh my God. Like, so anyways, what I'm trying to say is, um, I think the beauty in that is that even in their own way, in their own traditional way and non-American, non-Western way, um, I was still able to be celebrated for uplifting my voice, which isn't necessarily something I would say my, I would say traditionally is something that's valued very highly, but to me as an Asian American growing up here and um, that is really important to me. So the fact that, you know, I was able to do that through this movie and thus, um, you know, when even more people get to see it, uh, when it's, when it's officially released and everything, it's going to be a really good time. <laughs> um, I'll popcorn to Tyrus if he feels like he has anything that he wants to add. Um, for me, I think it was really amazing like to see my friend's reaction. Actually, my best friend was an extra in the movie and just seeing her excitement like on set and like watching me, she's like standing like at the door of the limo. Her name's Cass. I love Cass movie so much. <laughs> she was like, oh my God, Tyrus, like this is huge. And, like the whole time she was like hyping me up, which was just so amazing because we both come from like similar backgrounds and to just see her witnessing like my success and then see like her just being so amazing and like within this and with this and 
just together. I was just so honored and grateful. And then when actually we were doing screenings for it, I guess I remember I think to test it one of my friends Alora she went and saw it and she was like oh my god she was like I've never seen you in like a theatrical setting I like because I I think I come alive more so when I'm like on a stage or behind a camera than I do in person I'm like not as theatrical I'm like let me just have my smoothie and chill <laughs> but like on stage I'm like I'm using this and that and to the left and did you want to back then and I think it's now it's like kind of hard for me to live it down from the people who have seen it like they're always bringing it up and I'm like can <laughs> and I'm like can we just do yoga <laughs> yeah. Tyrus, Tyrus was the talk of the town at Sundance uh I don't know if if you have seen photos of our premiere night but Tyrus wore it the most incredible outfit uh like my oh, outfit just it's oh. a white white outfit. Yes. Uh, just Amazing. Look, looks like an angel descended from the heavens. <laughs> uh, and he was like in every Sundance recap, every publication just looked <laughs> stunning. And then people obviously he is like such such a memorable silhouette. Uh, so people would recognize him in the snow and people would be like, it's you, it's you, take photos. It was incredible to see just how how much people connected with that, with all of the cast, uh, but Tyrus specifically. Yeah, uh, it's really hard for you to hide when like you have the sun on your head. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> I'd be walking and like, and I'm like, it's not me, I swear. Oh, <laughs> yeah. well, so. on, that, on that note, you know, on that elevated note, I thank you each and every one of you for your time. The insight has been so amazing to learn about. And I'm so, you know, the, the movie was fantastic. I love it. And it's just, it, there's so many parts of Los Angeles that you guys captured and um, you guys should be very proud. So. Thank you. Of course. Thanks for having us. Of course. Thank you again for joining us in the screening to streaming edition of the Guadalajara Film Festival. Follow us on our website, thinkinla.com and on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter at thinkinla.com.